that the ANC has become an organization of populists, those that are power hungry, uh, those that are uh, uh, look power more. The ANC has uh, disappointed our people, my brother. We must say it without any fear of fear. Yeah. Our people are sleeping in darkness, to go across the country, communities, townships, and all of that. People are subjected to speak six of them. I'm on the run, I'm feeling extra motivated. I'm on my ground, Lord bless them if they hate it. I'm on the run, 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 run. Welcome to another episode of Culture Spotlight. We are out here at TUT Main Campus in Pretoria West. And we're sitting with none other than the SRC leadership himself. Yeah. Yes. Masike. Yes. I think I sent you a poster written Masaka. Masaka. <laughs> I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, forgive me, forgive me for that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how are you, man? No, I'm well, how's it? Hi. To Kupu Komri, so you won uh, ENCA. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, one thing that TUT is synonymous for yeah. is for strikes. Yeah. Why is that always the go-to move every time when there's an issue within the faculty? or the institution. No, that's a lie. Yeah. And, uh, but then it's not a lie because no, everywhere you no, go, no, 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 it's a lie. is synonymous with striking. It's a lie. Uh, look, in TUT there's a revolution. Yeah. Yeah, there's what we call a revolution in TUT, uh, where you find uh, a collective group of young conscious leaders yeah. uh, who classify or categorize as activists. Yeah. And TUT in its nature, it, uh, it look, it's home to many young people uh, who come from underprivileged homesteads. Yeah. Uh, meaning that these are children of domestic workers, uh, federal attendants, and uh, government employees. And look, uh, look they, they face a lot of socioeconomic challenges. Uh, and uh, the university itself as well is also challenged. Uh, with a lot of uh, problems uh, crossing from accommodation uh, issues, uh, the dilapidated infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, the mass fuss issues, uh, arrogant officials, uh, and etc. and etc. So uh, you'd find that, uh, look, from time to time, there must be a revolution yeah. uh, in order for, for us to hold uh, officials accountable. Officials that must make sure that uh, issues uh, that affect these students uh, are amicably addressed. Yes. So, what would you say is the hold up in them addressing these issues? Because I think they've been very present for the past, way before lockdown even happened, before COVID even happened. True. So, why, why, why the delay in mitigating and actually taking steps forward? To yeah. No, look, officials don't care. No, look, uh, well, well, unfortunately now in South Africa we're existing in a, in, 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 a, in a country where UK, uh, universities have become centers of commodity. Uh, where officials do not care about issues that affect young people. Uh, and uh, this is precisely because their kids uh, are not affected by these issues. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, the issues are starting in nice uh, universities, privileged universities, where you find that uh, students there don't complain about hot water. Yeah. Students there don't complain about dysfunctional toilets. Yeah. Uh, students there do not complain about spot buying issues uh, and bus issues, bus issues that, uh, you know. Uh, and unfortunately now these officials have become reluctant. Uh, they've entered the space only to enjoy their salaries and privileges that they get uh, from a managerial uh, point of view. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is precisely because, look, we are, we are existing in university where officials not care about issues that affect students and it is simple as that. And then it's your duty. So my thing is, 
what uh, as an SRC, what what are you doing or what are you able to do beyond simply organizing people, mobilizing people and bringing them together to, to have a shutdown or, or such? What else can an SRC do? My role as an SRC member yeah. is to make sure that I represent those that I lead. Yeah. And now to represent them, yeah. I hold the officials accountable. I'm not a friend of management. Yeah. Uh, as an SRC member, when I got elected, uh, I took an oath of office to say that I'm going to robustly engage issues uh, that affect your students. And like I've said, uh, uh, when you pose the question on uh, why uh, is TUT classified as one of the most problematic institutions in the yeah. country, and I said to you, no, TUT is a revolution. Uh, so as an SRC member, my task is very simple, is to go to management and tell them that I have pride of those that I lead. Currently, TUT are facing a, a one of the biggest challenges, and I think this challenge faces a lot of uh, students across universities in the country where the graduates uh, cannot get their certificates because they are withheld. And these are students that uh, were previously using an SFAS funded, uh, granted money to uh, study uh, for their qualifications. Uh, but unfortunately now, after they've graduated, they cannot uh, go and pursue jobs uh, precisely because now universities have commodified these certificates and they cannot uh, access them to go and look for jobs. So that is one of the most, uh, you know, uh, sensitive struggle. Yeah. Because you realize that, uh, look, you come to an institution of higher learning for three years, you start your, your fees are paid by MSFAS and all of that, and certain, uh, all of those issues. Uh, and then when it comes, the time comes for you to graduate, and you get your token of appreciation to yeah. say that, look, you've studied, and now it's time for you to go look for job. You can't. Universities have commodified the certificate and you can only get it on the basis that you pay the university. Yeah. So unfortunately, those those are some of the issues. Beyond the water crisis, uh, cold water crisis that affects students, of course, uh, the, these are, these are, these are, they are I, I would not want to say these are general issues, but um, uh, they, are, they are much more deeper issues uh, that, uh, you know, uh, make us, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the conscious uh, about uh, the revolution itself. So is there any progress in terms of that part of fixing that problem of having students not get their certificates? Yeah, the university has made a public declaration on the 8th of March, uh, of which they've uh, dragged, they are dragging on the matter. Yeah. Uh, precisely because these certificates, like I've just said to you, they are, they are, they are commodified. You can only get them if you have money to pay for it. And there are a lot of these students that come from uh, underprivileged home states where parents are not working. Uh, it's also difficult for them to get internships. I and mean, even the university does not uh, uh, have that flexible space where it's able to empower its own graduates to get uh, sustainable internships that have a great, um, uh, you know, a dignified salary yeah. in order for them to be able to pay for these certificates. So, yeah, I've, uh, up until today, I've not seen anyone receive their certificates. Uh, they've lied to us. Uh, we're used to, to, to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the graduates, of course, uh, they are asking us how far is the process yeah. uh, and so on and so forth and so on. But yeah, they've made a public declaration that graduates are going to get their certificates in order for them to go and look for their job. And I, I, I know, personally, I, I feel that it is a struggle that uh, you will fought for and you will it. Uh, but, but, and especially now during the week of uh, it's Youth Month, it's Youth Day, yesterday was Youth Day, and then uh, the provincial uh, Lesufi had a the premier. Nazi Spani, yeah, the premier, Nazi Spani initiative, and then he was told to people because uh, the state said we have an un unemployment rate of about the highest mm. that it has ever so been. So 15 million young people in the country are unemployed. Yeah, and then how things specifically we had about 1.2 million people. <laughs> students, not even students or, or graduates of that sort. And then we touched on the fact that TUT as an institution does not even have 
uh, internship programs. So what measures should be taken by an institution and as an SRC? What initiatives are you looking at in order to implement so that we fight this thing on all on, on ends? Yeah, no, you know it's unfortunate uh, that you go to school, you study for, for so many years. Yeah. And after you graduate, uh, you, you, you go to the, to the corporate and you can't find a job. Uh, I think that is yeah. that is sad. Yeah. Uh, because unfortunately, that is the reality that uh, many young people in this country are facing. Uh, they studied, uh, went to school, acquired qualifications, and they cannot go and, uh, and get employment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, look, we are not saying uh, give us peace jobs. Yeah. Uh, your internships uh, become peace jobs. Yeah. Because they are not sustainable. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and uh, look, inflation has increased rapidly in the country, uh, where you find that uh, affording bread has become expensive. Uh, fish oil is expensive as well. Uh, so, look, uh, Nasi Spani, uh, it, it, it's a good initiative uh, by the Premier Court, you know, which we, we applaud. Uh, we've seen his graduates while he was in the Ministry of Education in the uh, We've seen his dedication as well. Uh, but we're saying that as young people, give us something sustainable. Uh, give us something that will assist us to buy to buy property. Yeah. Uh, give us something that will assist us to be able to afford this commodified education system that has become so expensive. Uh, because look, the challenge now is that you get a job, uh, but you, you still cannot afford to pay your own rent <laughs> where you are renting. Uh, yeah. Either it's in a flat or either it's in a community. Uh, you can't, uh, you don't afford to, to buy groceries. Yeah. Uh, we children of domestic workers. I can't even send money to my parents uh, with this uh, uh, peace job. So well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, slamming uh, yeah. the Nazi Span, Nazi, Nazi Span initiative. Yeah. But I think that give us sustainable job so that we go and compete with these white people that we will start for in these institutions of violence. Because uh, the difference with us uh, and them is that, look, uh, immediately when a white person gets uh, his or her qualification, uh, automatically he's parachuted to go to, to, to being a director in his father's company. Uh, and I, as a graduate, told him a, a, a CA qualification, a chartered accountant qualification, you go to FNB, I'm only reduced to being a cleaner. Uh, so that's the reality that we are facing as black people. And I think it is important for us to all, because when we are speaking about jobs, we are speaking about an economic opportunity that must assist you to alleviate or better your standards of living as an individual. Yeah. So, we are saying that, look, uh, it is unfortunate because even here in the university, you can't raise them uh, <laughs> in some of the struggles that uh, affect us here yeah. as black people. They don't use our buses. Yeah. Uh, it's only us who use these buses. They have a special parking lot in the university. Uh, when we it's a registration, you know registration. What, uh, what, what do you mean by special? Money? They have parking lots. They yeah. have cars. You don't have oh. cars. You don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> they have cars. These people. <laughs> oh, they have cars. Yeah. Uh, we don't have cars. So the universities uh, look. They have, they have the privilege to to park the scooters and all those issues. We use buses and bicycles to come to campus. Yeah. But I'm just saying that, uh, look, and even some of these uh, faculties and environments, when you enter the atmosphere, you can feel that this is a white, uh, you know, uh, the yeah. ambience. You can yeah. just feel, you can smell that, you no, know, look, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, So I'm just saying that, look, when you have to have jobs, you have to have an economic opportunity that must assist a black child to be a better future. And unfortunately, in the struggles that affect us as young people in institutions, of Ireland, you cannot say it's white people. Yeah. yeah, and then you were speaking, before I cut you off, you were speaking about registration. Also. Registration, we, got, we don't see them in long Do you know that yeah. when matric yeah, yeah, yeah. matriculants, you know, when uh, when they finish writing their um, Umalusi uh, exams, yeah. uh, we know that January is, is peak hour, yeah. is rush hour, where these young people who have done so well in matric, they are eager to go to school. Yeah. 
and uh, you know that uh, during registration in universities across the country, they face a challenge of uh, online late applications. Yeah. Where scores of these kids, they come in numbers to seek yeah. for an opportunity. But I'm saying that in the midst of those queues, there's, there, there are no white people. I've not seen any white person. Go to vet, I've not seen any white person in vet. Uh, in the struggles, the struggle that was led by the president of uh, the historic debt and uh, to fight uh, student accommodation is there. I've not seen any white person chanting on the streets to say that we are also affected, the rent is expensive, uh, we are also owing fees. Uh, Why do you think that is? They are privileged. <laughs> They are privileged. Yeah. Uh, their parents are shareholders. Their parents are stakeholders in these institutions of violence. Yeah. Uh, look, in TUT, there's one residence called uh, the Polonaise. Polonaise is uh, the name Polonaise is, 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 is the name of a daughter of the former VC before TUT became, uh, when it was 10th uh, year, before it was uh, 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 emerged as TUT, yeah. it was 10th Polonaise is a child. Uh, the name Polonaise, yeah. Dennis, is the name of uh, uh, the former VC yeah. of the university. So you can see that even some of these buildings are named uh, historically. My, uh, historically yeah. uh, you, you know, and uh, unfortunately, our, our students, the, the cultures that still exist in these residences are still white cultures. Because when they come every year, they are still called names, popcorns, stock suites, their initiation programs where they must be initiated with this white culture, uh, where there's lineup, uh, they are given names. You see, my name is Gamuke, yeah. uh, but when I arrive in this residence, I must be called popcorn. Uh, as part of initiation <laughs> and orientation. So you can check that we are still living, uh, this, 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 this institution is still uh, structured on, 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 on colonial foundations and unfortunately yeah. we've, we've not resolved uh, upon some of these issues. Yeah, that's, that, that's very sad to hear. Yeah. But speaking on something that I think is close to you, uh, the Kamuhe to M, uh, I saw that you've been a lot busy, but then I haven't seen it a lot lately. The uh, M Foundation. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's happening on that front? Then? What is it all about? Yeah. No. No. We tried. Uh, we're trying. Yeah. Uh, we're not only activists in institutions of higher learning. Yeah. Uh, but back in our communities as well, like I've said, uh, we 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 saw about Kwaoko. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, who are Sasa beneficiaries in, in this case? And we exist uh, in communities where some of our friends, uh, you know, their conditions, uh, it's poverty, it's malnutrition. Yeah. And uh, some, some, some of these issues are able to build you up as an individual. And you are able, if you're a conscious uh, individual, are able to, you know, uh, realize that, uh, look, life is not only about uh, training, to have a nice car and live in safety. Yeah. Uh, but responsibility comes first uh, at home. Yeah. Uh, so Jamukhet's own foundation is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a is a social course uh, yeah. where we, we assist the elderly, uh, the disabled in our communities. We've adopted 15 city centers uh, where we support childhood at home families there. Yeah. Uh, childhood at home kids. I mean, I mean, I mean to say. Uh, the, with, with food packages on a monthly basis. Yeah. Uh, and during COVID as well, we tried to assist. We saw COVID, a lot of people lost jobs. Yeah. Uh, we tried to, to come up with sustainable programs uh, that uh, could assist those that uh, were affected by the pandemic at the time. Uh, where we managed to assist over 3,000 families in Potem. Uh, and uh, other parts in Ikurule with food parcels on a weekly basis, of course. So you're from Ikurule? I'm from uh, Yeah, look, we're trying, man. Uh, we've done a lot of initiatives. I can't even think <laughs> of any of those. Look, this thing, we've done everything that you can yeah. think of. Uh, some of these initiatives now are done as uh, looting programs. Yeah. They are done as fundraising programs where people just want to take pictures. Uh, just to show that they you look, know, they are, they are, they are community people. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a community person. Look, I did this and that, and I condemned it when a lot wanted yeah. to use my, to use uh, our work 
as a campaigning strategy because a lot of people came. Hey, you see that they look, man, can you come and take pictures? Okay. How do you take pictures with struggle in South Africa? Yeah. How do you take pride? And then, yeah. uh, when, you know, when someone is, 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 is living in dire uh, situations, poverty situations, and you want to come and take pictures so that you post on Facebook and to show people that you, you went there. So, yeah, unfortunately, so like we've done, I've partnered with the university as well on many, many programs, sports programs, I've partnered with the university. Uh, 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 we, oh, we've done a lot. We've yeah, done a lot. I saw, uh, especially when it comes to uh, this monthly, monthly basis, uh, providing groceries on a monthly basis to families. Yeah. I think it was, it was a great initiative in my head because can give someone a package once yes. and expect them to be okay. Exactly. That is when that is when you know we we, we realized that when we saw that food is not sustainable. Yeah. You know when, when I say I'm giving you food tomorrow today you eat tomorrow. Is yeah. So we, we realized that no look man how can we create a better system? Yeah. A sustainable system that can at least maybe uh, be assist these, these families that we've identified yeah. and perhaps on a weekly basis. That is why in our initiatives you, you, you saw that we tried to come up with a soup kitchen. Yeah. A soup kitchen on a weekly basis, we identify a subsection in the community. Yeah. We call upon all public heads, uh, officials there, the, if there's a councillor in the ward, we call uh, or him on board. Uh, officials, members of the community, yeah. uh, to assist us in identifying these families because look, they are based there. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we will create that sustainable program through a database, we take numbers, uh, and we try to also engage other stakeholders that uh, you know we, 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 we believe that they can form part of this program and assist this particular social cause. So we, we've tried because we, we realize that look, it's COVID nineteen. I give you food today, tomorrow is finished. Yeah. But what happens tomorrow? Yeah. Because you are I just employed. wanted to give you a six on that one. <laughs> it's a proper initiative. Yeah. And, um, I'm for some. I'm supporting it yeah. uh, from the sidelines, and I'm. Um, yeah. I see the work, and uh, I think in the near future, ten years from now, we'll actually have people coming out of it saying. That actually alleviated some of the struggles that I had yeah. that I can focus on other things. Yeah. And I think that's a great initiative and you should keep going. Yeah. Because like I said, I saw that now it seems like it's slowing down, but yeah. we should keep at it stay. Yes. No, it's not slowing down. <laughs> it's not, we are looking for resources. Yeah. So if there are people with the resources to assist us to yeah. uh, better assist our communities, the foundation is there. Uh, yeah. they, they've done a lot. Yeah. Uh, gender-based violence programs uh, yeah. we've partnered with a lot of uh, NPOs in the community uh, the, the, the hygiene programs for yeah. girls um, uh, uh, sanitary pets yeah. we've partnered with uh, schools in the community to say that uh, we'll come uh, on a monthly basis to assist uh, so we're saying that anyone who has resources to assist us to yeah. better assist those that well in the institution, there was even in the institution, member or members of the community before our members of uh, yeah. the, the university as well. So if there's anyone there who's willing, and I said to that, look, the foundation does not need to stop if I'm not there. Yeah. If there's anyone who sees that you know, the passion is there, the, the passion is there, and this is good for for society, uh, they must come on board and assist us uh, to, to continue for The foundation is not about me, yeah. uh, but it's about those that uh, you know uh, share the very same particular sentiments that we share. See that uh, look, let us go back to the community uh, and assist our people. Uh, and speaking of uh, gender-based violence, uh, I think there's been a rife upscale uh, in, in the institution because uh, I also saw you on the interview that you did on the uh, There's been a kid that was raped in the yes. campus. Mm. Uh, what's the progress on that? And, what actually transpired? Look, uh, we've condemned it, condemned it harshly. Yeah. Uh, that uh, our institutions of higher learning yeah. are not uh, uh, potential sites. If you are a criminal, 
a potential perpetrator, and we've also condemned officials because look, gender-based violence is, is not only you know the officials that must parade with ties and suits, yeah. and uh, they think that they are not potential perpetrators of gender-based violence. We've condemned it actually uh, because we, 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 there were many sudden incidents. Uh, where girls were killed, totally killed. Yeah, in the wake of Tokozo, right? Yeah, in Tokozo, Yeah. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. And uh, yeah, we, we've tried, man. Uh, I think it's, it is, it, 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 is, it is not bad. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, look, we're on the ground. Yeah. We're on the ground, and comrades, uh, they are conscientized daily that, look, women are not objects. Uh, yeah. and, uh, we've tried to uh, limit, uh, you know, uh, we, we've tried our best, man. This gender-based violence is a problem, uh, because we can't uh, discuss it for two minutes. True, true. Uh, you know, a lot of girls have died. Uh, uh, I think uh, my question goes to, like, as an institution, right. seeing that, you know, we don't have to have 10 people die before we actually say we're doing something. So I want to understand as to what is the institution because I think there was a, a question of security also, not being enough security. Yeah, we said they must uh, stop sleeping at the gate. <laughs> yeah, we like sleeping, so we said they must not sleep. Uh, yeah. Because uh, security is, 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 I will not say it's, 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 a, it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it, it is a problem, of course. Yeah. Uh, because if, if, you know, if a perpetrator, this Kevin was not getting a Maranjan. You can must for it to be an official from the head. Yeah. You enter our premises and then you ask questions with uh, no, no, no one noticing your intentions. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, uh, we will try. My, my brother, comrades are on the ground. Yeah. Uh, forces are on the ground uh, to say that look, for comrades, this thing must be condemned harshly. And uh, the university, through uh, SIEP, the, the program at uh, Hoshimamburu, yeah. uh, where we also played our support uh, as well, was look, we, we said, okay, it's fine, but we don't think the university. How can you take students to prison? Yeah, I was, I was uh, trying to understand. Traumatizing is, is <laughs> yeah. called. Because we went there, I came back traumatized myself. Because <laughs> of forces that we saw, they crying and appealing. Like, hey, look, my comrades, stop. So yeah. uh, we saw my panties there. Uh, comrades so what was that? Uh, to go it was see, just to say, hey. Hey, you know, they were scary. You must not scare people. Yeah. What about to say? Students, you must not scare them. Yeah. Also, the university, I think they were trying to scare. You must be scared. Go there. And then yeah. when maybe perhaps when you go there, you come back with that. That's, yeah. Uh, that. Oh, now I'm no longer. I'm um, Yeah. Uh, but look, man, uh, I think this thing is more psychological. Yeah. Uh, we need more mental health programs. Yeah. Uh, where comrades are able to, and uh, general students, people in general, people. Uh, are able to go and have one on one sessions because I think everything starts in the mind. It's mental. It's, me it's mental. If you yeah, can fix this thing first. Physical, you know, yeah, we start here, problem. you fix the dissonance here first. Yeah. And then you try to understand because people are challenged, my brother. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, I also believe that those that commit suicide is also a form of gender based violence. Yeah. You've killed yourself because yeah. of many problems that you are facing as well as an individual. Perhaps I'll not want to justify a person killing himself. Yeah. But I'm just saying that a lot of people are going through a lot. And what we need to do, we need to create a rehabilitation centers. Universities have, need to have rehabilitation centers. Yeah. Before yeah. 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 bring experts, professionals, have counseling sessions on campus. We have uh, modules of counseling as a compulsory module where students are able to go through that psychiatric training and other things yeah. so that you are able to, because students are faced with a lot of problems even in their own respective residences. Yeah. You know, they, uh, you know, sleeping with an empty stomach on a daily basis, not knowing where your next meal will come from, is also a problem. Uh, and many of our students, they don't speak about some, some of these things. They come to school hungry. Uh, some of them, they even to resort to crime. Others, they resort to drugs, alcohol. Of which I'm not justifying. 
Uh, I'm saying that a lot of young people are drinking because they have issues. But I'm saying that it starts here. Yeah, mental health is a problem. And I think we need to have more of um, rehabilitation centers where we're able to rehabilitate young people. Because young people are facing, are going to a lot, my brother. As young people, uh, we're going to a lot. Uh, to ask you, are you actively active in politics outside of uh, the student for Kings? Yes, yeah, I'm a member of the ANC Youth League. Yeah. I'm a member of the ANC in Kutsu. <laughs> And I'm a president declared by SARS going to Tehran. General feeling about your ANC. Yeah, like just your general feeling. ANC or ANC League? Let's start with ANC. We'll get to Youth League because oh. we'll get to the nitty gritty of the Youth League. No, the ANC is, is, a, is a. Look, man, the ANC is. is the, the enemy has infiltrated the camp. Yeah. You must say it without any fear or fear. Yeah that the ANC has become an organization of populists, those that are power hungry, uh, those that are uh, look power monger. The ANC has uh, disappointed our people, my brother, we must say without any fear of it. Yeah. Our people are sleeping darkness, go across the country, communities, townships and all of that. People are subjected to speech of the children, stage eight of the children. And general people will, of course, ask themselves questions like, but look, why are we, uh, and some of these, these issues will automatically be pointed to the ANC, which is yeah. the ruling party in this case. So I'm saying the ANC has failed our people. Uh, our people do not have jobs. Young people are unemployed. Uh, private sector is not held accountable. Uh, those that are in power, uh, they're enjoying blue lights, they're enjoying privileges of the state, state power, yeah. and other things. And unfortunately, young people are used as voting cows. Well, we mobilize young people to fill a vein for old people who do not have interests of young people. Uh, as SASCO, the NC does not assist us with anything, by the way, until the run come SRC elections. But going to elections, the Lawrence want to come to SARS yeah. for mobilization. <laughs> uh, that Congress mobilized me. We're going to elections now, <laughs> door to door. You understand? So we're crying, my brother, uh, as young comrades. And uh, look, young people have lost faith in the ends. It's, it's the reality. Yeah. Young people have lost faith in the African National Congress. Uh, uh, many scandals of corruption. Uh, many of our forces being uh, facing criminal charges, uh, money laundering, and all of. So this, the, the NC has, has, has gone uh, reputational damage, yeah. and that is that is the honest reality. Unfortunately, we cannot hide it anymore. Institutions of higher learning have become centers of commodity. Education is not free in its quality as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, my brother. Is that even like a realistic dream to have? Free quality education. education yeah. yeah, education must be free. Uh, the state has enough capacity, the state has enough resources uh, to make education free. Uh, in other developed states, education is free. Go to China, young people, uh, the education is free there. Uh, education that empowers uh, its own economy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm saying that education is free. It must be free. It is, it is possible for education to be free in this country. Coming to the youth, uh, elections are coming up, right? Um, yeah. And then... <laughs> the National Congress. Completely. You know what I'm about to ask. Yes. Uh, who are we? Who are we going for? Ah, and, the elite does not. The, the elite does not exist. You must not lie. Yeah. Yeah. You must say it without any fear or favor. Yeah. That the youth league does not exist. It died long ago. If you can ask any general young person, and I'm giving you this simple task now, that yeah. just ask one general person here on campus and ask them what is the NC youth league. Yeah. They'll tell you that they don't know it. It does not exist. Young people do not identify themselves with the ANC. They do not know it. So it's, it's, it's the honest reality. So what are you saying about the leaders 
which uh, leaders who are in place who's who leading? are now campaigning who's leading who's campaigning <laughs> who's campaigning who's don't campaigning do that. Don't do that. who's campaigning don't do that. i don't know facebook yeah they're busy economic or that what what they're busy yeah they're, they're busy comrades are busy uh, posters others are lobbying you know this ntp has become rhetoric yeah. that people lobby you, you lobby because you are, you are power hungry you want to go and seek with all people in the parliament and the two house so that we can be uh, absorbed in an office of an mnc mnc minister whatever you're not conscious about issues that affect young people you're not on the ground you're not you're not you're not you're not uh, 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 conscientizing young people that picket lines are necessary you know yeah. the NCU league has collapsed to a point that young people do not see it important to go to the picket lines yeah but picket lines are important for the revolution to continue yeah uh, but you have an, 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 a, a NCU league that is obsessed with positions that if I can be elected as president or even as secretary general, so that I can be closer to civil and balloon. It's a problem. We don't want that kind of leadership, but we want a, an ANC youth league that will will, will will go back to to, to our communities and reconcientize uh, young people who are on drugs, reconcientize young people who have been captured by alcohol, yeah. young people who have been swallowed and swamped in taverns and nightclubs. You know, young people now are bored. They do not know what to do. When they wake up in the morning, they go to Facebook to like pictures because true, they do not have true. daily activities. And that is the role of the youth is supposedly supposed to have programs of young people that when you wake up as a young person in South Africa because we are challenged with our education system, this is my role. This is the role that I ought to play. Yeah. This is what I need to do. Young people, when you mobilize them for, for a program, uh, they are already expecting free bees because, uh, look, that is the only way you can you can bring them to a program. <laughs> but no, they are free t-shirts and water and other things and KFC. Now there's KFC they never went to a point of buying uh, people caves and all of those issues. So what I'm saying that the, the NCU league has collapsed. It is yeah. no longer there. Yeah. It does not exist. And unfortunately, we see them, uh, we are speaking about young people. But they don't even stay with young people. Yeah, that's because uh, in the midst of, I was shocked when you said uh, Saskot does not get support from the AIDS. We don't get it at all. Because I expect that they should get it from the youth league. Uh, the youth league. Yeah, because they are. The youth league can't assist us with anything because look, the ANC youth league has uh, has taken an oath of office yeah. to participate in factional politics of the ANC, meaning that young people in the ANC youth league have 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 groups now that you no know, now I'm going to this group and now I'm going to this group and uh, they support old people on the ANC and these ones they also support these types of group uh, of old people in the ANC so having an ANC league that is divided young people divided yeah they are divided these young people because they are supporting a particular group of old people who must give them jobs or maybe they buy them alcohol and, and all sorts of all, all those issues yeah. and these ones they support this one so there's no common cause that unites young people in the ANC the NYTT got dissolved they failed to take us to Congress the previous NYTT yeah there's another NYTT now that is there yeah. and but you can see that this Congress is a uh, is, is, uh, is organized. It's not a congress. It's, it's an organized congress. This one. Yeah. No, it's not. A, it's not a genuine congress. Whoever is going to be elected there is just going to be elected there because maybe perhaps it was a uh, it was a uh, look uh, imposed. The the, the 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 young people there. Uh, uh, young people who are imposed by senior leadership of the ANC to go and lead young people. Meaning that if I'm an elder in the ANC and I like you, or I give you money. Yeah. or your position because now it's about position and proximity now in the NCU that they want to position themselves and proximize themselves and other things uh, look uh, yeah i support you and then uh, particular branches of the NCU league are now imposed with this particular name that the uh, colin go is our president and we must support him to go to congress so are we saying you think does not have 
there's no character there's no there's no there's no character in the NCP. Whoever is going to be elected there's a president there's no president in the NCP. There's nothing. Nothing of the NCP is it, it died, my brother. It's dead. We've said it. We've said it. We've so said it. So are we saying leadership is the thing that killed the youth team? Or yeah, the NC is to be blamed. Because yeah. remember the NC uses young people. Yeah. For Congress politics. Yeah. And all right. after Malema there was been a fear that uh, such things will repeat itself. So the always now, After Malema what? Uh, I'm sure Malema almost took hold the entire ANC and everything. Mm -hmm. So are we saying our older uh, leaders within the ANC In an now? Chair. I'm saying there's no policy position of, yeah. of, of the youth league currently. Yeah. You do not know what is the policy position on the economy, on education, on politics, on on religion. And you don't know anything. It's the NCAA league. They must come. Currently yeah. now in the country there's been a discussion uh, of uh, 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 expropriation of land without compensation. Yeah. Uh, which was a policy that was adopted in the, con in the, in the Congress of the Italy, that land must be re uh, re uh, dispossessed uh, from white people, yeah. uh, and so forth and so on. But I'm saying now, there's no longer a policy position now. We don't know why, what is it now that we're discussing. We don't have a meeting. And that is why I said to you, that is why young people are bored. Uh, <laughs> because they don't have, you know, they don't have, uh, their responsibility that they are given. You yeah. are supposed to give young people responsibility. Young people in institutions of violence and the struggle is for education. Go and hold officials accountable. Go and hold executive management accountable. The struggle is of graduates to receive a certificate. Go and make sure that all graduates who are previously funded by government are given certificates. Yeah. Uh, go and make sure that the standard of living in our uh, residences, uh, either internal or external, are conducive for teaching and learning. Go and make sure that uh, cafeterias are not commodified. Yeah. Uh, go and make sure that buses are not commodified. Go and make sure that education is free and it is accessible in institutions of violin. That is supposed to be the role of young people. For young people, they are not in the role. They wake up, go to Facebook, like pictures. <laughs> I saw uh, also you were fighting the thing on Europa's advertising. Yeah. Uh, what was the issue with that? No, Europa is arrogant. <laughs> Europa is very arrogant. They can't, they can't. By the way, for context, uh, Europa is a pub, I would say. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, a, it's a nightclub. Yeah, it's a nightclub. Yeah. For context, for those who don't know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's a, it's a nightclub. They are, they are very arrogant. Uh, they released, uh, I think it was when, when Nesfas said, young, uh, in the mean. You know, there's that time where Nesfas released meal allowances to students. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's at the beginning of registration. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they released the poster that says, in the mean, the PI is this much, where it's five runs or something. Hey, uh, you know, young people, because, no, 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 hey. Hey, yeah, no. But no, Europa was supposed to condemn the ash day for that thing. They can't do this. We can't just uh, think that the money of our parents is money that must uh, benefit uh, them. Are we saying, but then are we, why are we condemning Europa for their marketing? It's wrong. It means you've seen that there's a loophole. Uh -huh. uh, and and you want to capitalize. You know, yeah. society is bleeding. Young people are bleeding, my brother. Sure. Uh, and unfortunately, even these, 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 these establishments, there, these nightclubs, yeah. uh, look, they're not playing a significant role in assisting young people. Uh, and I'll say this in the context of, you know, in our communities, there are a lot of taverns. True, true. There's, there's a, every, every weekend, there's a new one popping up. And in the tavern, there's a generator. <laughs> and in the public school, there's no generator. So it means that the tavern 
is able to generate money yeah. uh, to sustain itself. Yeah. But how many young people are from that community that go to school hungry? It means that the target can assist. Let's say, for instance, a school does not have capacity because these SGP committees have collapsed because of tenders and other things. But a school that is in the center of our community and a lot of young people attend to that school and as a tavern or as a pub, we have capacity to assist the school to buy generate. They're not doing that. Yeah. So I'm saying it is not Europa's role to come to TUT and pledge solidarity with the struggle that affects young people. But we're saying that they must not use that as an opportunity to market their business. Oh, okay, makes sense. They must pledge solidarity yeah. that these are our clients. Yeah. It's like when I go to a to a pub. Sometimes I tell that man, hey, I do not have money. Yeah. I have, I always come and cut my hair. Yeah. As a conscious barber man, yeah. you must know that this is my client. And before him being a client, he has issues. Uh, and he's also a human being. Yeah. And then if he's an honest person, he'll say to me, No, ah, it's fine. Today I'm cut you for free. Yeah. It's fine, man, it's fine. So he's pledging with my issues. Yeah. He's pledging with my so he's pledging, he's pledging solidarity to his challenges that I face in the yeah. So Europa in that case, they yeah. saw that oh a lot of Nespa students. They get money, yeah. they rush to bottle store. Yeah. And then I can market market through that, of which it is very wrong and it must be condemned harshly. So are we saying that we're seeking for institutions such as Europa and and, and, and for, to actually come into solidarity with students and say they're making a lot of money. And I've, made, and I've made an example that our communities are flooding off more pubs, shisanyamas, yeah. and other things compared to schools and libraries. You know, in my community, I come from Kwatem. You know, the size of the library in my in my in my community is the size of a toilet. It's it's that how small it is. And I think uh, it's been more than eight years now since the library has been there, yeah. not renovated. I'm not saying it's their role to assist us, because look now, there's this form of entitlement from government that government must be the one that is able to improve infrastructure, development and other things. Yeah. But I'm saying as a, as, 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 as a community, as a society, we must be able to be conscious enough, assist each other to build a meaningful community. So if there's a propaganda that is there, where one of our comrades died there, was shot there, yeah. was yeah. shot there, we went there. We never said they must close yeah. uh, their business complete. Of course, on the day we were angry because there was uh, an event that was scheduled for that day. Yeah. So we saw that you now they are becoming arrogant, they are prioritizing money over this cadre of ours who has died, died and shot by a criminal. Yeah. But we've said when we wanted to. Uh, encourage the family. We said propaganda. Kamu Helos Kwama was a breadwinner. Yeah. And a people of hope in his community. Where a lot of young people looked up to him. Propaganda must be the first sponsor. Yeah. Uh, what I said was that those that believed and prescribed in the struggles of Kamelos Kwama Chiota will go to social development and register a Kamelos Kwama Chiota Foundation because look, the boy was a dancer, yeah. he was an artist, he's, he's in the entertainment industry. Yeah. So what propaganda is his places? He goes there for entertainment and to also make money. Yeah. Huh? Then you said that those that believed and prescribed in the struggles of Kam as an entertainer, will go to social development and register an NPO in the name of the poor. Yeah. And propaganda must be the first sponsor of the foundation. Yeah. Because you understand that NPOs also struggle to get funding. True. So, but if propaganda is conscious and has capacity, and this young boy has died in propaganda, and they have, they, they, they have enough financial muscle to assist this NPO to make sure that the legacy of the poor continues, why not? So that is what we're saying that so in Konamashi Sanyam, where a lot of people spend money on alcohol. Uh, and, it's about and, time we call them out. Then. Assist our communities. Yeah. Assist young people to go to school. 
assist uh, feeding schemes in our communities so that we grow in all in other spheres yeah. as well education wise self wise and other things we must not only praise that during weekend we are going to KK Matwan Chisanyam, it ends there. The man, the man makes money, drives the nice car, but the, the development of our community still remains stagnant. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very problematic for me. I don't want to lie, I'm a it's, it's a national issue, it's a norm. Yeah, because we praise Chisanyamas more than the issues that affect us as young people yeah. in the community. Uh, and speaking of young people, also, uh, especially with elections coming up. Uh, there's been a very huge, huge issue on my side also, uh, and I'm guilty of it, of not voting. You're wrong. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm calling myself out also, <laughs> this one, of, of not voting. Uh, what initiative, because then I think there's been states that says uh, only 20% of the youth actually vote, and also, but then we also want uh, youth-led uh, Leadership. Unfortunately, there's no league to incentivize you to vote, so it's a problem. So, what are we doing in the midst of, especially within the student facilities and the students, also the student leaders, uh, to conscientize uh, the youth and actually give motive outside of the KFC, outside of. No, I think young people must take responsibility of their problems. Yeah. I think young people have also, uh, uh, we must blame them at some point. I, I always blame young people. Yeah. Uh, at some point, but man, look, we are trying as a team uh, to, to fight. Yeah. But the people that sell us out are those that were leading in most, in most, in most instances. Yeah. Uh, so young people must vote. Uh, young people must understand that uh, look, uh, a lot of young people died uh, for this democracy you know, of today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yesterday was uh, an emotional day. Sure. Uh, personally, to me, because I'm, 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 I'm a conscious individual, uh, you know. Uh, who has studied the history of this country and the role that young people played in this country. Yeah. Uh, young people during 1976 uh, were, never, were never excited to go to to to, to watch my parents in Kanzo. Yeah. They, they closed shoppings. Yeah. They closed taverns. They moved old people who used to sit in taverns while they were in the picket lines. Yeah. You see that as young people were trying to fight for the struggles of black people in this country, and you are just seated in a beer hall. They moved them. They moved them. Young people, they moved them. They chose beer halls. Yeah. And it is however unfortunate that today it is young people that call for the opening of their halls. Yeah. But no, their halls must open. So what I'm just saying in a nutshell is that young people must take responsibility of their selves yeah. and their issues. And, 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 and what, I'm, so what is it that I'm saying? I'm saying that as a young person you must be conscious of where you come from. Personally, I know where I come from. I know that I've been raised by my grandmother is 92 years of, of age today. Yeah. And uh, every month, the old woman sends me 200 grand. It comes from where it comes from, Sasa. Yeah. Uh, so automatically, I'm, 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 I'm aware oh, yeah. that I can't come to an institution of violence and find myself in a marathon with privileged students whose parents are ministers or whose parents are working for government. But I must be conscious of where I come from that, no, look, if I make a mistake of this opportunity that has been given to me to start, I will have disappointed that old woman yeah. who makes sure that on a monthly basis I get 200 grand to buy bread at school. So young people must not neglect their issues to government or to pastors or to 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 to, to uh, officials that uh, look yeah. it's Ramaphosa that must assist us. Well, I'm, I'm saying young people must take initiative to become responsible citizens. One, 
the consumption of alcohol must be condemned harshly because we will not win the struggles that we, fa we face that uh, uh, in this world is like, I like bringing white people in this context because uh, they are far much ahead of us economic wise yeah. and, and, and in terms of uh, other things we will not be able to match them if we are still stagnant uh, in thinking uh, and reluctant in action yeah. like I must sit in a tavern and, uh, but I'm saying I'm unemployed I'm looking for a job I must enter offices I must engage the environment I must look for opportunity that look man, my mother is a domestic worker uh, my parent, my parents are unemployed uh, and how do I better assist that is the role of a young person and through through a conscious vote you'll understand that a responsible government is to play a role in assisting me as a young person in making sure that opportunities that I'm seeking are readily available for me such that when I go to the Department of Education I'm able to get an opportunity because government is playing a meaningful role to make sure that spaces of uh, this particular department must be open to young people that, must, that will come at any given time to look for an opportunity. So I'm saying that it is important for young people to vote uh, with consciousness. Yeah. That look, uh, unfortunately, the government has failed us, the NC has failed, uh, and uh, there's, there's no alternative, unfortunately. Uh, but so, I will, but then once you say that now, you like saying people should vote for uh, something that is hopelessness. No, I'm not saying young people must vote for for which part. Yeah. But I'm saying young people, the generation of 1976 at the time, and even President Oliver Tambo says that uh, he fears an ANC-led government that would be corrupt at the time because it will be much more worse than the apartheid regime at that time. Yeah. So I'm not saying I'm from this convo to the ANC, but I'm just saying that you must be conscious, and the only way we can be able to revive perhaps during the ANC is mobilizing ourselves as young people to take over this ANC, either through discussions or either that, either us through taking these old people out of this. I'm not saying young people now must mobilize themselves because they must occupy a position. Yeah. But I'm saying that young people... I think maybe that's what's been happening. Yeah, right? unfortunately, the youth league, that's what the youth league is all about, these comrades. They want to occupy a position. They're not, they're not preoccupied with what is to be done. Why do, Why must we agitate the ANC to come on board? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and that is supposed to be the role of young people. So I'm saying young people must mobilize themselves. Uh, they must organize themselves uh, through one idea, uh, just like the Christmas for a generation, yeah. uh, which which mobilized themselves to say that there must be a revolution. And I've always said it uh, that uh, look, a revolution is always revolted uh, in institutions of violence. And those kids, who uh, Hector Peterson, uh, you know, they left school to say we're going to picket lines. And then we're going to fight in the picket lines. Are we saying? Are we? Okay, I'm thinking we are finding. Strong... I'm saying, I'm saying now in the country yeah. there's a yeah. problem of load shedding. Yeah, where a lot of uh, uh, people do not know where, where oh, what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, what's going to happen? But I'm saying, I said it that institutions of violence in the country are also affected by this load shedding. Yeah. The academic project is sabotaged when there's when lights go out. Lab yeah. Laboratories, libraries, eye centers cannot work. Yeah. Uh, when there's load shit. But I'm saying to you, we've always seen in the history of this kind that a revolution has always risen in institutions of violence. So I'm saying that if young people are quiet in universities, in private colleges, in high schools, there's nothing that's, the, 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 there's, there's nothing that's going to happen with load shit. He said, our, 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 I'm not saying young people now must, <laughs> but I'm saying we've always seen it. Yeah. Because you go to UG, students, yeah. there's load shitting, they're affected. It's exams. Yeah. Lights off. But the, the government is now pushing an initiative. Go to Soshanguvi. Yeah. Duty. Lights off. Yeah. But young people are quiet. Because government is now pushing a, a narrative of let's teach kids how to install solar panels. Let's leave install those solar metals. panels. Leave, <laughs> leave all those things. What I'm just saying is that 
It is because as young people, we are not united. Yeah. We are not conscious that we are facing a challenge in this country where there's darkness. Yeah. There's darkness in the country now. The country is dark, too. And we are quiet as young people. And I've made a simple example that the generation of 1976 was fed up with the regime. They said, fuck, fuck, now uh, we're tired of bantu education, where we must be taught in Africa, and where we must carry a dumpers to yeah. go to town, to go to toilet, where toilets of, 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 of ourselves are classified to black and white, where white people can be given a privilege to go to a functional toilet and black people a dysfunctional toilet. They said, enough is enough. They said, if we have to die, we are ready to die. Uh, and uh, okay, I'm gonna pose this question. Since we say there's a lot of void in terms of leadership, is the youth capable of having a leaderless revolution? It's never possible. A leader, a, a revolution without the leader is, cha is chaos. Uh, that seems to be the only solution. We can't, we, we, we can't lead ourselves. Huh? You can't, you can't, you need an organized revolution. Yeah. Where uh, 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 people uh, 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 decide who must lead them. I think young people now need to, need to take a stand. And this is the only way where we will be able to take out those in power. And this is my opinion that look, uh, these people are elected in congresses and conferences where they lobby each other through money and other things yeah. uh, to particular uh, to elect a particular cadre into power. Uh, and it's not general people, uh, general masses, those that go to the ballot paper to vote yeah. on who must lead. But it's those group, particular groupings, uh, the prop delegates, they're called delegates. Yeah. But I'm saying young people, they have a right through a mobilized revolution to elect or nominate through yeah. their terms and conditions because now we th there's a revolution that must take place yeah uh, we, we must be led by terms and conditions but that you look you sell out you, leave, you take you out you do well uh, 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 we, 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 we continue the revolution. So I'm saying that young people can, can elect those that, I believe that young people can elect those that they wa uh, whom they want to lead uh, and they can take it from them. Let's say you're creating a squad, mm. a football squad. Mm. Uh, who are you deploying uh, in terms of leadership? Uh, you're creating your own squad. Uh, politics are, uh, uh, there's no EFF, there's no DA, there's nothing. You're just trying to pick the best from the crop. Who are we creating? What squad? What's your squad? We've always seen in football. Yeah. That the most uh, game changers yeah. are middle fielders. Yeah. So you must have a strong, solid middle field. Yeah. Attacking yeah. and defensive. And you must have one who plays box to box. Yeah. So uh, the midfield must be strong. I will not say strikers because strikers they can get injured there. Yeah. Uh, but, so who are, who are we middle fielding with? From which 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 That's why I'm saying there's mm. no organization mm. because right now I feel like organizations are what is delaying us mm. because within an organization there's a lot of infiltrations happening and there's a lot of people who are benefiting simply because they are part of a specific organization and they are not actually suited for positions that they are given simply because so that's why i'm like saying if we are as the youth mm. how, how to create our own leaders from the crop that we have mm. from all the organizations what would you who would you elect from those crops of leaders that we have the current the current in the current uh, let's say we're in the ANC yeah let's say in the ANC EFF so you can pick one from ENC you can pick one from DA you can pick one from EFF whichever way you want it I am this guy. Uh, we are creating maybe a national squad. So we're picking one from Pirate Chiefs. The NC must. <laughs> must be the striker, <laughs> must be the defender, and then the goalkeeper. <laughs> and then. So look, it must be the NC, the NC, 
Defender ANC, middle ANC, striker ANC, wingers ANC, look. Sasko. Yeah, Sasko, Sasko. Yeah, or it must just be the ANC and Sasko and the ANC. They'll see how they. <laughs> Those are the only people so who can take to war. So are you saying other institutions don't, other organizations don't have leaders mm -hmm. or capable leaders? Because I feel like there's other institutions that have capable leaders. Mm -hmm. They are simply because of uh, organization politics. They are unable to fulfill the... I think you know what, you know what has made our people lose confidence in politics? Yeah. It's political affiliation. True, true, true. Yes, that's why I'm I'm saying uh, right now. Let's and create our the, own and the character and the strength of an organization cannot be categorized or cannot be reduced to political affiliation. True. So unfortunately, this political affiliates and the reason why maybe people become rhetoric. Yeah. Because look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a NC member in Kustendi. Yeah. But of course, I will not recommend the EFF to lead the kind. But unfortunately, the happening the right is that. There are some metros where the NC is in a collision with DA. Yeah. So I would not want to reduce this discussion on the basis that no, the NC must lead. Of course, there are good leaders that are floated with other political structures. That yeah. is that is an honest reality. Yeah. Pan Africanist of note. Uh, and these are Fismas collectivists that I've seen yeah. while growing up. I'm yeah. not saying people, I must say, I'm saying to me, hey, was not really. I'm saying I've seen them while I was growing up here. Yeah. Uh, and they are, they, are, they are comrades who are in, affiliated in different organizations. Uh, so look, man, I believe that they are kidders. And uh, he, those kidders must come united to yeah. build one organization that must either defeat or defend moving forward. Okay, okay. You didn't give me my super squad, but it's okay, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. In closing, how would you like to close it off? And what would you like to say to anybody? Or what would you want somebody to take from from you yeah. as an individual and your course and yeah, from the whole entire discussion that yeah. we just had? No, look, uh, mine is very simple. It is to say that the struggle continues. Yeah. Aluta continua. Victoria Sampere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, young people, uh, the picket lines are calling. Uh, and I told these ones of the university <laughs> that the picket lines are calling. Uh, they don't like me. Uh, and uh, by the way, I, um, it was not my ambition to be liked by the, yeah. by the main officials. But I'm saying that young people that have a passion to lead must not have an appetite uh, of wanting to be in proximal circles with officials or those that have power only on the basis that they have capacity either through resource and money. Uh, but they must be conscious about the struggles that affect them as individuals and the struggles that affect them, affect those that they lead. Uh, in order for us to champion the issues of our country, uh, the, we need uh, an educated uh, forefront. Uh, we need young people with ideas. We need young people with skills. We need young people who are dedicated. We need young people who are sober in intellect and in thinking and young people who uh, are humble uh, to understand that uh, leadership is not about positions. Yeah. It's not about uh, you being... You know, I led this university, I was called president before I became president. <laughs> and, uh, when did you become president? I was elected last year. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, in the SRC elections of 2022-2023. But I was living in the service before. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, current I'm also recognizes the institutional president. Yeah. And I always condemn this that look uh, I respect people who are occupying positions, but when you are a leader of society, you must not take a position and put it there. Yeah. 
that uh, you must understand that uh, leadership comes with responsibility and accountability. And what is this responsibility and accountability is to make sure that you lead those, they are leading, uh, uh, those that you lead are led with the greatest of humility and uh, uh, diligence uh, to fulfill uh, the social cause uh, that must then um, uh, alleviate our people from poverty and malnutrition and to make sure that South Africa prospers uh, as, 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 as a democratic state. And that's how we close it off. We out. Thank you much. Hola. Yeah. I do you more. Hey, we get even pay like this. Yeah. I hope I spoke well. Hey. You think so? Oh, no, 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 Hey, I say, I'm going to go. I'm going